Can you read to me the nameplate? Judge Ebony K. Williams. So the only thing that matters in this particular courtroom is how I see it. I am from North Carolina by way of Louisiana with some West Coast cool and a New York edge. Do we have a problem, ma'am? No, I don't, Your Honor. Equal justice is all about the most important values of our country, freedom, integrity, and those are the things that I'm striving for. Ma'am, you run your household, this man gets to run his. I decided to become an attorney and pursue the law. I wanted to be a voice for the voiceless. This court cannot not hold this woman accountable. People from all sectors of life, black, white, purple, gay, straight, queer, and that's what Equal Justice with Judge Ebony K. Williams is all about. Jessie Falwell claimed she landed in the hospital after she learned her boyfriend was unfaithful. Paolo Caltrone says he never told Miss Falwell they were exclusive, so her illness is not his fault. See, I've got Ms. Falwell, here's my plaintiff, and Mr. Caltrone as my defendant, okay? Ms. Falwell, what brings you to court today? I am suing my ex-boyfriend in personal inju injury and medical expenses mm -hmm. after his cheating tendencies caused me to suffer a stress cardiomyopathy. I'm sorry, it, one more time. A stress cardiomyopathy. Stress cardiomyopathy? Correct. Okay. And it's also known as the broken heart syndrome. And this is uh, a real medical yes. condition. I know it sounds silly, but you're on it. I didn't is, say it sounds it silly. Is true. I yes. just never heard of it before. But yes. you know, we all learn something new every day. Yes. Okay. I'm sure you have some some offering of proof around that. Okay. So tell me a little bit about the relationship, Miss Falwell. When did you two meet? Tell me the love story. All of that. So I met Paulo at a 4th of July party sometime last year, and we really hit it off. I mean, I, I don't want to sound cheesy, but when we met, there were actual fireworks, and it, it was crazy because well, I... I mean, I, I could maybe understand. He's, he's not, you know, he's not too bad on the eyes. Yeah. Right, Mr. Bailiff? I mean, even sure. a grown man, you could say that. Okay. <laughs> all right, go. Yeah, he, he, all right. Okay, go ahead. Okay, go ahead, Ms. Falwell. Well... It was crazy because I had never had chemistry like that with anybody before. It was out of like a, a romance movie or a novel or hmm. something. And I finally decided it was time to just bite the bullet and lose my virginity. And oh, yeah, okay. I, <clears throat> oh, I wow. wasn't waiting for any religious reasons or anything. Okay. I just kind of wanted to find the right guy. Okay. And Paulo seemed really sweet and gentle. And he told me it was his first time too. And he said that he would protect my heart through it. Mm. And we saw each other about twice a month. And he would always drive down, pick me up, and take me to the movies. Was this a long distance relationship, Ms. Falwell? I mean, with traffic, it what? could sometimes be around 45 minutes. Which... Okay, no, Ms. Falwell. <laughs> Okay, let me let's 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 back up. You th you're putting a lot on the court. <laughs> it's already been a lot. Okay, so I'm getting the impression that you are not super experienced in relationships. That is correct. Yeah. That's correct. Mm -hmm. Okay, so because you are an adult. Yes. Uh, around how old are you, Miss Falwell? I'm 22. Okay, so you're a 22 year old young but grown woman. Correct. Who chose to lose her virginity? I think we would all agree a little bit later in life than most. Mm -hmm. Not Egregiously so, but a little bit. Correct. And you decided upon this gentleman because you had a feeling about him. Yes, we, as I said before, we kind of had a chemistry that I had never felt before, and he told me that he was waiting too, so it really okay. just. So y'all were two right. virgins in love? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Or so I thought. No. Okay, let me get to you, Mr. Mm -hmm. Coltrone. I get the exact opposite impression of you. I get the feeling that you are quite experienced with the ladies. Am I right? You're right. You're right. Okay, I'm right. Okay, we're going to come back to you in a minute. Let's go back to you, Miss Baldwell. <laughs> okay, so two virgins in love. Now, you, you, you're you losing me with, but you're only seeing each other twice a month. Why is that the case? Um. Well, we kind of live a little bit of a distance from each other. And You said 45 minutes. Uh, well, <laughs> he would it, always is tell it me. Is it 45 minutes? Around that. Okay, that's, that's, I'm going to help you out here, Miss Baldwell. That's, that's not a distance. Yeah. That's reasonable. Well, on his case, he would always say that he was busy with work, and oh. so... Your Honor, he... I have my own company, so... Okay, we're going to get to you, Mr. Coltrone. Now, I do want to hear your side, but let's, let's go ahead, Ms. Falwell. So, he said he's busy with work, Correct. thus could see you every other week. Correct. And you were happy with that? I, I mean, I wasn't happy with it, but, you know, I, I didn't feel like I knew exactly what was going on with the relationship. But you accepted so. it for eight months. Correct. Correct. Yes. Okay, great. 
And were you seeing other men during this time? No, I was not. Okay. And did y'all have a conversation at some point, Ms. Falwell, that you two were in an exclusive, committed relationship? This is very important. Yes. Um, we technically did not have the conversation, but I assumed that he would have told me if he was seeing somebody. So this, there, there, here we are back at this lack of experience. Okay. Let's go to you, Mr. Caltrone. So tell me how you see this woman. Is she, was she your girlfriend? Were you seeing other people? And I really need to know if you were a virgin. I was not. No. Okay. But did you, did you represent yourself as such? I was, yes. <laughs> Just give me one second, Mr. Caltrone. Okay, hold on. Are you hearing this, Ms. Okay. Um, is, it, is it just me? It, you, it is not you. Only. Okay, it okay, okay. <laughs> Definitely. So you, you are being frank with the court in saying that you, you lied to this woman. You pretended to be a virgin. You were not a virgin. You are clearly a very nice looking ladies man and caliente is all of that. Okay, got it. Now tell me why you lied to her. The fact that we never were in an exclusive relationship, I had other... Um, Women that I saw. How many? The time. How many? We're talking about one or two. How many women, Mr. Cutler? Your Honor, is that relevant? You ask me if it's relevant in my courtroom. Yes. I only ask questions that are relevant to my judgment, Mr. Cutler. Understand. Coming up on Equal Justice. I saw that he had been texting things about me to his friends, like I was pretty, but I was bad in bed, <gasps> and I wasn't relationship material. If you'll be in the Los Angeles area and want to bring your case to court, call one eight eight eight. 552-6870. This is Equal Justice. Equal Justice is back with the case of Jesse Falwell, who blames her ex-boyfriend Paolo Caltrone for breaking her heart. So about how many? Three. Three? I don't think I believe you, Mr. Caltron. That's okay. Miss uh, Miss Falwell, you have a, uh, a witness here on your behalf, yes? I do. Okay, Miss West, is that your name? Yes. Okay, go ahead and stand up, Miss West. You've been, she's been sworn in? She has been sworn in, Your Honor. Okay, tell me, provide some insight because this is looking real crazy, to be honest with you. I agree with you, Your Honor. It's yes. absolutely crazy. Um, my name is Diane, mm -hmm. and Paul and I had been dating for almost three years. Oh, wow. And the key word to that is dating exclusively. So yeah. you had the conversation? Yes, we had the conversation because okay. he begged me to have the conversation. Oh, he begged you to be his, his lady, his yep. girlfriend. and my, his one and only. Yeah, so okay. three, is, three is interesting. So, so three years, mm -hmm. and then what happened? So funny enough, we actually also met on a holiday. Looks like oh. he has a weird little pattern. Um, we met on New Year's Eve, and we definitely hit it off. I was into him, but at that time in my life, I wasn't really looking for a relationship. Mm -hmm. I was fine being single, getting to know lots of people. Sure. And he was the one who was like, I, I really like you. I want to be just dating you. We should be exclusive. Okay. Yeah. So starting like a month or so later, I wow. was like, sure. Okay. And that's when it began. And we stayed dating exclusively up until I found out about this situation mm -hmm. here with Jesse. Oh. Yeah. So, oh, wait a minute. So y'all were together and he meets this beauty in July. Correct, Your Honor. And how did you find out about her? So, no, no, this is for Miss West. Miss West, how did you find out about uh, Miss Falwell? Well, actually, I found out about it from Jesse herself. Oh, okay. one day, yeah, I got this DM from her on social media, and she was like, "Hey, I know this is kind of weird. Any chance you're you're with Paolo?" And I felt a little weird about it, because I was like, "Where is this going?" Mm -hmm. But. I didn't see why I should lie. It had been years with him. Mm -hmm. So I told her the truth, and that's when she told me that he had been with her, actually, for about nine months. Wow. Okay, so, uh, Ms. Falwell, do you have any evidence to the court to back up, really, some very substantial claims? Okay, yes. go ahead and present that to my I'll Give everything place. to my bailiff. Here we go. Oh, Ma'am, so take I can the review. I'll take your oh, awesome. There we go. Thank you. Yeah, because this is, this is a, ladies, this is a lot. Yes, I actually um, was, Paulo gave me his phone to change the music on it, and I actually <laughs> went in. You heard my bailiff chuckle. Now, that's a rookie mistake, Mr. Caltrone. Go <laughs> ahead, though. For to change the your, music. Mr. Caltrone, for a man of your experience, I would expect better. Go ahead, ma'am. And um, this is when we were about to go on a trip together to a music festival, so I kind of wanted to, you know, define the relationship, but I didn't want to ask him any questions before I knew how he felt about me. So when he handed me his phone, I opened the messages app and I searched my name. 
and I came across some texts that were pretty unsavory. Mm. Um, first, I saw <clears throat> that he had been texting things about me to his friends, like I was pretty, but I was bad in bed, <gasps> and I wasn't relationship material. And then, not only that, I found countless nudes from other women, Ooh. as well as a sext exchange between him and somebody I thought was just his friend, who is my witness, Diane, here, which uh, you have in front of so you. So you had heard of her, but you thought she was a friend. Correct. I thought that they were just platonic friends. Well, see, that's why Auntie E don't believe in that friend stuff mm -hmm. when we're together. But that's a whole other story. Okay, so let's go to this particular text message. How's it going with new girls? So this must be between the defendant and one of his homeboys. Mm -hmm. Man, I like Jessie, but she's not really wifey material. Laugh out loud, what do you mean? She's got a pretty face, but she's not great in bed. Why are you spending so much time with her? That's a good question. We never see you anymore. I'm not just spending time with just her. I got other girls on the roster. Wow, okay, let's see, let's see this other text message here. The witness here, this is from you, Diane. You say, baby, I miss you. What's good? I miss your body. Okay, so I guess she must have been good in bed, okay. When can I see you again? You say, whenever, I'm out of town this weekend, but let's link up next week. Uh-oh, wine me, dime me, 69 me. Oh, you real fast, okay. You're still the best I've ever had, even after all these years, okay. Let's get to this medical uh, receipt here. This is an invoice from the hospital. This says that you had emergency room uh, expenses, you had blood tests, you had uh, coronary algorithm, wow, um, EKG uh, to the tune of 675, cardiac MRI, that was $1,200, and then you were in the hospital. For many days? Four days. But it's right here. <laughs> Sis, we gotta talk. Okay. What do you, that, 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 that is an overwhelming amount of evidence against your reputation and your integrity, Mr. Caltron. What do you have to tell this court about yourself? Your, your Honor, I have to point out again that me and her we were not. Well, let's speak to Ms. West, because they, <laughs> I, I don't, you know they say, everybody ain't lying. Okay? So Ms. West is saying pretty much the same exact thing. So were I, you with her? I. I already Miss good in bed. Miss I, I the best I ever had. I already apologized to Diane many times because okay, so I made a mistake there. <laughs> Coming up on Equal Justice. You were in love at the beginning yes. when you were a virgin. <laughs> and then you fell out of love after you tested the goods and they weren't up to your speed. Is that is, that, is that, if that's what it is, just just tell the court. This is Equal Justice. Equal Justice is back with the case of Jesse Falwell, who blames her ex-boyfriend Paolo Caltron for breaking her heart. After three years of a monogamous relationship, she finds out that you are dating the plaintiff, Miss Falwell. That's correct. That's correct. Okay. I, I couldn't help it. I I'm a romantic guy. I fell in love. <laughs> with which one? First with Diane, and then with her. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm confused, because when I go back to that text message, let's put that back on but the that plasma. That was nine, nine months later. Oh, we started dating. okay, so you were in love at the beginning, yes. when you were a virgin. <laughs> <laughs> and then you fell out of love after you tested the goods and they weren't up to your speed. Is that, is that, is that if that's what it is, just, just tell the court, Mr. Caltron. Your Honor, yeah, that's true. I, that's the truth. That's okay, true. thank you for telling the truth, Mr. Castro. You, you did get some points for that. You can have a seat, Ms. West. Thank you for your testimony. You, your was Honor. very valuable to the court. Talk to me about these symptoms. How did you know that you were going into what sounds a lot like a cardiac arrest? I mean, I see an EKG. This, all, this sounds like a heart attack situation waiting to happen. It's similar to a heart attack. It okay. mimics a heart attack. What happened was I had just seen the texts and it kind of felt like everything just came crashing down on me. My heart started beating irregularly. I, I couldn't breathe and Paulo noticed and asked if he should drive me to the doctor and I said I was fine because I didn't really want to speak to him. Because you were, yeah, I, yeah, right, I yeah, sure. didn't want to talk to him and then everything just went black. And, and you woke up what, in the hospital? Woke up in the hospital. Doctors surrounding me. Tests, oh my goodness! Everything. Is that is that how it went down, Mr. Caltron? Your Honor, we were. She, she went through my phone. She invaded my privacy, and then she had this um, reaction. Reaction, and then I had my father. My father passed a few months ago from I'm a heart sorry attack. About that. So, oh, from an actual yeah. heart attack. Okay. And um, yeah. he, I saw, I saw the signs, and I was really thinking she had an heart attack. 
coming up on Equal Justice. But I want you to look at that man. Now I know you're a relatively young woman and you are relatively inexperienced. But I, no, look at, look, at, look at him some more. Because I want you to sear that image. This is Equal Justice. Equal Justice is back with the case of Jesse Falwell, who blames her ex-boyfriend Paolo Caltrone for breaking her heart. Ms. Uh, Falwell, I had never heard of an actual broken heart. Now, I've heard of the, the saying, um, but to see that there are medical conditions that define one's emotional stress to the point of physical palpitations, that's pretty incredible. Right, Mr. Caltrone? Pretty incredible, yes. Oh, okay, right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, I believe the court has heard enough of, of, of the two of you. I think Mr. Caltrone strikes me as an individual who presents exactly as he is, Ms. Falwell. I hear you. I believe that he lied to you. I believe that he misled you. But I want you to look at that man. Now, I know you're a relatively young woman, and you are relatively inexperienced. But I, no, look at, look, at, look at him some more. Because I want you to sear that image and that energy into your mind. Because the next time you see a man running game on you of this magnitude, I need you to be able to see it for what it is. Now, the court takes very seriously this medical condition that very much is, is, is presents and is similar to the affect of a cardiac arrest or a heart attack. But I have to say, based off of what the court has heard today, specifically a statement you made early in your testimony, Ms. Falwell, which is you wanted to have the define the relationship conversation, but you really were afraid to because you didn't know what he was going to say. So when you tell the court that you are conceding at least a little bit, Ms. Falwell, that you broke your own heart just a little bit. Judge Ebony's verdict when Equal Justice returns. This is Equal Justice. So I am going to hold you liable, Mr. Caltrone, but not for the full amount. Because when adults sign up for adult relationships, we all have to share in the accountability of the consequences, Ms. Falwell. So I'm going to hold you responsible for $3,000 of damages because when you felt that thing, that's called woman's intuition, that's when you should have ended it. You chose not to. So you've got to eat that. You've got to carry the responsibility of that. But I am going to have this man pay for $4,508 worth of your medical bills because when you do the crime in this court, you got to pay the fine, Mr. Caltrone. That's my judgment. All rise. Judge Ebony has ruled in favor of the plaintiff. The defendant is ordered to pay $4,508. Any final thoughts? I should have known better than to give my virginity to a scumbag like you. Okay. You've had your day in court. Please follow me. Yeah. Ladies first. Thank you. This has been a production of Allen Media Group.